Hey there, Tundra Nation, and welcome back to the channel. Here in Minnesota, winter is set in deep, and ooh, ooh, baby, it's cold outside. And while some of you in California may not understand what a winter is, the internet's favorite flannel daddy has decided to freeze test ARs, AKs, SCARs, and every other rifle you may own, causing the internet to go crazy. As a proud AR owner myself, I wanted to give you some impractical Tundra wisdom from the cold north on how to keep your firearm ready for action. So let's warm things up by hitting that subscribe button and getting to 100,000 subscribers just to make our YouTube overlords sweat about another gun channel getting more popular. If you've already hit that subscribe button, drop me a comment down below regarding why we are wrong and Flannel Man is right. So sit back, warm up some cocoa with a shot of whiskey in it, folks, and let's start the show. Well, that was pointless. Now, we don't get political on this channel, so just know that all these tips come from both the Rebel Alliance and Empire operators who served with Valor on the ice planet of Hoth. Most weapon malfunctions occur because of improper lubrication. So what if I told you there was a self-heating lubricant already? Ladies and gents, we live in the most amazing times because an all-American company already makes a self-heating lubricant perfect for repetitive action in cold environments. That's right, when operating out in the cold, just grab yourself some KY warming lube and go to town. I quit. If you trust warming lube in the bedroom, then you gotta trust it on the battlefield. Let science take over and watch as your BCG runs flawlessly through your AR over and over and over again. No way it gets stuck when it's being kept toasty warm by science. Imagine the fear in your enemy's eyes when you come charging across the battlefield armed with your favorite rifle and half a gallon of lube. I know I wouldn't be sticking around to see what happens next, and I can't think of a single reason why this is a bad idea. Now, when looking for actual good products for your firearms, look no further than this week's sponsor, Sportsman's Guide. Whether it's optics, ammo, clothing, or actual gun lubricant, Sportsman's Guide has it at competitive prices with additional savings for Buyers Club members. You can join at $9.99 for the first three months, which is just enough time to get stocked up for all your spring hunting, fishing, and how can we forget LARPing activities. So check out Sportsman's Guide and get yourself a tree stand, some camo and night vision, and stalk your prey like Sam Fisher if he hadn't worked out for three years and has been living off a diet of nothing but White Castle. Now, Tundra Nation, I can already hear you typing down in the comments section, Tyler, every time I buy self-heating lubricant, it mysteriously disappears and my wife and her close high school friend Chet go camping for three days. Are there solutions that don't involve buying expensive specialized lubricants? Yes. Definitely. As somebody who still uses the Disney Plus password of my first writer, I can appreciate your thriftiness. This time of year, many homes are slow cooking delicious chilies, stews, and soups. So use that all-American ingenuity and multitask. Now, I'm something of a scientist myself, and I know that if something is warm, it cannot be cold. While you or your spouse are cooking that amazing chili, just go ahead and toss some gun parts into it. It makes them warm and resistant to freezing while adding a unique umami flavor to any soup or stew. Here's a bonus. After firing off a full mag, your gun has a very pleasant aroma. It's delicious. Uh, good. Now, I've been doing this internet thing just long enough to consider myself an expert, which is why I look 10 years older than I am. Would you believe I'm only 25? <laughs> Probably not. But looking at our channel's algorithm, there is a good chance that you are living in an unheated basement, don't own a crock pot, or have a significant other. That's okay, folks. We have a solution just for you. Head down to your local hardware store and ask for all of the duct tape and hot hands that they have. If those hot hands can keep you warm, then why not your rifle? That's right. For pennies, you can keep your rifle as toasty warm as your sad, lonely, mittened up hands holding some hot cocoa. If you're feeling crafty, you can rattle can the hot hands before applying them so you can have an easily removable paint job. Can't wait to see what pops up on Pinterest after this, folks. That's disgusting. There is no problem that can't be fixed with duct tape and American know-how. Sure, your rifle's gonna weigh five pounds more, but can you put a price on keeping you ready for action when battling Rusky's Red Dawn style in the Arctic? Or you could just go to your range when it's 20 below zero, hoping that the cold keeps away the brass goblins. Pro tip. It won't. Wolverines! Now, this might come as a bit of a surprise, but I respect anyone who works hard to make videos that inform the public about firearms. 
Well, almost anyone. Loser! You're a loser! Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Well, you should be, because you are dirt. Now, with that being said, I have detected a flaw in old Flannel Daddy's testing methods. He assumes that water is what you're going to spill on your rifle out in the cold. And this is where I must disagree with Garantham. What are the odds that you are drinking water while out in the woods with a rifle? Friends, I think we all know they are functionally zero. So I guess I'll roll with the Hydro homies on Reddit. Actually, I have no idea what any of that last sentence means, but my writers assure me it's relevant. When it comes to woodland hydration, I have found that I hydrate more when there's some medicinal scotch mixed in with my water. And you know what makes scotch great? Its freezing temperature is way below water. So if you find yourself in the woods on a dead cold night, don't assume that the rifle's a teetotaler. Give it some booze and see what happens. I mean, why do you think St. Bernard's carry brandy around their necks instead of water? Are you telling me that cold hard science is right and those adorable dogs are wrong? Nope. Now I know some of you are saying at this point, but he's already done a mud test now, so you're behind in your videos. Don't worry folks, we have a solution for both problems in one. That's right, it's a twofer. And this leads me to the best way to keep your rifle functional in the extreme cold, mud, or even sand and salt water conditions. Stay inside! As somebody who lives in the great white section of America, I have a question for you. What are you doing outside? Are you trying to prove how tough you are? I live in a very cold area and look, this is my rifle. It's not frozen. It doesn't have mud and rocks in the action and on my optic. You know why? Because I stay inside. We all know war in winter conditions is the worst and to the best of my knowledge, there is only one guy in history that was happy to fight in the winter and I think as badass as Seam Ohio was, he had to be a little crazy too. Oh, you crazy. You know what your ancestors across this nation in covered wagons would have done if they had modern rifles, delivered pizzas, home theaters, and easy access to booze that wouldn't make you go blind? Honestly, go grab a Ouija board and commune with those jerks and watch as they are more interested in the plot to Real Housewives in New Jersey than giving you pro tips to survive in the cold. They'd stay put. They'd enjoy the first day of their life where something wasn't trying to eat them. Odds are they kept moving west because something was chasing them. What are you running from? Depression? Crippling debt? Government agents that drive red cars? Uh, guys, <laughs> you okay out there? I think making the writers watch all those Yankee Marshall videos has had some unforeseen effects. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! Anyway, stay home, eat up a Hot Pocket, and come watch me stream on Twitch six days a week. Besides, going outside would ruin the fresh look of your Yeezys. Okay, come on guys, can we stop writing about made up footwear? Seriously? Tundra Nation, these five very impractical tips to keeping your rifle warm should keep you back to warm, whatever that is, and ready for whatever will come this winter. I've stocked up for the inevitable snowpocalypse by ensuring my home is a metric ton of Pop-Tarts, Hot Pockets, and Jesse Ventura trading cards. If you think you have a better idea for keeping your rifle warm this winter, drop it in the comments below where we will personally think about responding to them. Thanks for watching, guys, and make sure to check out these two cripplers right here, and we'll see you next week when we still don't know what the heck we're doing. Bye.